Hi everyone, I would like to talk about female hair loss and its management. First of all, let's look at what is female hair loss. We see women complaining of lot of hair loss. It could be patterned or it could be diffuse. That means that either you are losing hair from all over the scalp or there is a certain pattern that means the middle area or the sides or near the temples is the one that you are losing more hair from. Let's look at the causes of female hair loss. In generalized causes, it could be dietary or nutritional. That means certain elements or nutritional supplements, if they are lacking, can actually lead on to hair loss. That includes iron in a big way in women. Especially during periods, we see and the menstrual cycle, that is, that they lose a lot of blood. Women usually don't know how much blood loss is supposed to happen. So if they have a lot of clots coming in the blood, that means that this is heavy bleeding. So we have to see the iron profile. Secondly is B12 deficiency, which is very common in vegetarians. We see that people who do not eat a lot of green leafy vegetables and some poultry like fish, chicken, eggs also have B12 deficiency and which is very common in women. The third cause could be vitamin D deficiency, which is almost everywhere. So you keep a tap on your vitamin D levels and see that it could be a reason for hair loss. The second, which is very, very common and important cause of diffuse hair loss could be stress. So stress could be everywhere. It could be because, I mean, you know, any type of stress which is not leading, making you sleep normally. It is the one that is always heavy there on your mind can be one of the cause of hair loss. The third important cause that is also in general as well as in the patterned hair loss is hormonal. So in hormonal causes we see a lot of uh, PCOS that is polycystic ovarian disease, some menstrual irregularities, thyroid issues, subclinical hypothyroidism that is thyroid problems which are not easily picked up even on lab tests could be lurking there in your blood you could be having certain subtle symptoms about it but hair loss could be the first symptom of thyroid issue so keep a tap on thyroid problems and let your doctor decide which tests to offer you and there are certain medicines or drugs that can also lead to hair loss that includes anti-cancer drugs that includes antidepressants antipsychotics anti-epileptic drugs so those kind of medicines can also lead to hair loss. Even certain desi medicines can lead to hair loss. Smoking is an important cause of hair loss, which can happen. Although moderate drinking does not lead to hair loss, but overboard drinking can because it affects the nutrition. And sometimes crash dieting, when you lose a lot of weight and the hair is an organ which is considered accessory by the body. So women are bound to lose weight and also their hair if you crash. Last but not the least, I would like to talk about the cosmetics. That means the cosmetic procedures that a lot of women do. That means the parlor procedures like keratin treatment, straightening, blonding, curling. So make sure your hair is in a healthy state. And the amount of chemical and heat that you apply to your hair can also lead to hair loss. In the drugs, I forgot to mention oral contraceptive pills they are double-edged sword. Sometimes they can also lead to improvement in hair loss and sometimes they themselves can cause hair loss too. A very important cause that is there in the patterned hair loss that is the one in which there is central thinning and the sides go thinned out is genetics that means hereditary cause of hair loss. Sometimes we find that patients say that I take appropriate diet, I am so great at all the nutrition, I have no stress and still I'm losing hair. So it could be hereditary, usually seen in families. Sometimes the generations are also skipped and this patterned hair loss comes up both in men as in women. An important cause of hair loss is alopecia areata. That means patients complain of hair loss in patches. There are some completely bald patches that can happen in isolated areas over the scalp or rarely the whole hair from the scalp is lost along with eyebrows and body hair that could be gone. And another subset is cicatricial alopecia in which there are certain diseases of the scalp 
like lichen planus, psoriasis and even something like SLE or morphia. It can lead to hair loss because of underlying skin disease which can be easily diagnosed with scalp biopsy. An important investigation while we are dealing with female hair loss is photography and trichoscan. Trichoscan can actually tell you what is the hair density as well as hair thickness in the front compared to the back. A lot of time doctors do global photography just to see the before and after pictures. Hair pull test is also important in which the doctor will grab a few hair and try to pull it out and if there is more than 10% hair coming out means it is positive, means you are having active hair loss. Also at times scalp biopsy is done to see if there is any underlying skin problem. Coming to investigations, your doctor might order a list of investigations for you because female hair loss is a broad spectrum. There could be multiple reasons. So starting with iron profile, with B12, vitamin D, ultrasound, your hormonal profile like prolactin, FSH, LH, testosterone, free and total and even going on to ultrasound and especially thyroid antibodies. Even that could help us provide a signal what is going wrong with in the body. Coming to management, again manage your stress, manage your diet. You should have good amount of proteins, green leafy vegetables, certain nuts and seeds in your diet. Also omega-3 can help with vitamin D supplements. Coming to the drug of choice, a lot of time doctors prescribe minoxidil which is usually given once at night, certain peptides are also given, nutritional supplements are given, PRP is quite a rage these days, PRP therapy can actually improve the hair loss as well as hair thinning, even low level laser therapy and mesotherapy seem to have some effect, they yet have to have certain scientific evidence to back up. Last but not the least, if the hair loss is quite a bit, you could be offered hair transplant. Sometimes when the skin starts to show, usually women we have seen don't go completely bald. That means that here there is usually thinning and usually in the frontal area only, that is the front part of the scalp and going on to the sides. But if it cannot be controlled with medical management, hair transplant is a good option and it gives a very satisfying results although the results are slow they come slowly over time it might take a few months to see the actual one but in the hands of a good trained surgeon and team the results are gratifying thank you so much